CA May Masterclass on Variance Analysis, Budget versus Actuals, an essential tool for gaining better financial control. Today we have Samarth Bhatia with us, a seasoned expert with over 10 years of experience as a faculty member and content creator for international finance certifications. As a chartered accountant in India, certified management accountant in USA and certified public accountant USA. Samarth is well equipped to guide you through the intricacies of variance analysis and help you bridge the gap between budgeting and actual financial performance. So without further ado, let's dive in. Good morning everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. So let's discuss about very, very important topic, which is related to variance analysis. So what is variance? So let's discuss about the variance. So when I'm talking about the variance, I'm talking about the differences. Differences between what? Differences between the budgeted number and the actual number. Budgeted number and the actual numbers. See, just like uh, we normally prepare the budgets in our house, uh, whenever we are getting the salaries, whenever we are getting the money, we will be preparing a budget that how we have to spend this money. In the same way, uh, the organizations are also preparing the budgets on the monthly basis, on the quarterly basis or on the yearly basis. The company is regularly preparing the budgets. And according to the budgets, everything will go on in the organization. Nothing will be going uh, against the budget. Everything is going according to the budget. And it is most important that the company have to meet their targets. Whatever is, whatever the number is written in the budget, the company have to meet these targets. That is the part of planning itself. So uh, one of the function of the management is planning. And according to the plan, when the planning is converted into monetary terms, it will be known as budget. So every company have to meet their targets, have to meet their budgets. This is something they are going to do. Now, when something is not going according to the budget, for that purpose, the analysis have to be done. And that is the part of controlling. Mainly the management have to control what is going right, what is going wrong. If something is going wrong, they have to make sure that if in this particular quarter it is wrong, in the next quarter it is going to be correct. And for that purpose, they will be doing the analysis. And that analysis is known as variance analysis, where they are calculating the variances between the budgeted numbers and the actual numbers. And this is something I would call as a variance analysis. In the variance analysis, I would say there is a multiple type of variances we do. Uh, we have a variances for sales. We have the variances for direct material cost. We have the variance for the labor cost and for the overheads. So mainly uh, I'm discussing here the direct material variance first. So let's start. So now you can have a question here. Why you are just calculating the material variance? And what is the need for that? See, material is one of the most important cost for any production company. Direct material cost is very important. Just like if any company is uh, dealing into furniture. So mainly the wood, wood cost is something the material cost for them. And you can just expect how important the wood is for the furniture making company. So that's why direct material is very important for any company. And that is, that is the reason we will be calculating the direct material variances. So in the direct material variances, mainly I will be calculating the two types of variances. So what do you think? How the direct material costs can deviate? How the direct material costs can be different from the budget? There is the chance that uh, whatever the price we are expecting for the direct material, uh, we are not able to buy at the same price. Either the budgeted price is more or the budgeted price is less, right? Suppose I'm expecting that I will purchase the raw material, uh, one kg of raw material at $10, but I'm getting the same material at $12 from the market. So nothing, we can do nothing. 
because in the market when we prepare the budget at that time the price is just ten dollars but now the price have risen and the price has become twelve dollars so we cannot do anything so we can only prepare the we can only calculate the variance so direct material price variance so how we calculate this so there is a price variance so definitely we will be taking the difference in the price so whatever is the standard price or budgeted price means whatever the price we are expecting out of this i will be subtracting the actual price and this will give me the variation how much variation is coming in the price but how much is the total variation total variation will be coming according to the number of units purchased so actual multiply by actual quantity purchased so this is how i will be calculating the overall direct material price variance if i am getting the positive number it will be favorable for the company if i am getting the negative number it will be unfavorable for the company or adverse for the company the next thing is direct material quantity variance so when i am discussing about the direct material quantity variance guys the budget you can easily connect with uh, unit 2 in the unit 2 we have already completed the budgeting topic you can easily connect it with the budgeting topic okay so now i am talking about the direct material quantity variance so when i am talking about the quantity i am talking about the differences in the quantity number of quantities we are using because definitely i am expecting that uh, to make one unit uh, to make one unit of product i need 3 kg 3 kg of raw material this is just an uh, just a standard but actually the number of kgs can change actually there is the chance we are only using 2 kg for single unit there is the chance we are using 2.5 kg there is the same chance that we are using 4 kg of raw material so the difference between uh, differences is standard quantity standard quantity minus actual quantity and multiply by standard price so we are taking the difference in the quantities how much quantities will be deviating this is how we will be calculating the direct material quantity variance in the same way we can calculate the direct labor uh, direct labor variances as well but let's do one example first and then we will be moving to the let's do one example okay so uh mainly okay we can do it in the next slide next page so let's take one example uh standard price is let me take 2 dollars per kg that is the standard price and uh 20000 units are manufactured or produced right and mainly uh the standard price is 2 dollars and i am considering that one unit of product requires 3 kg of raw material okay so we know about the standard quantity for one unit standard quantity is 3 kg and standard price is 2 dollars per kg 
and 20,000 units are going to be manufactured. Actual quantity used uh, for producing 20,000 units is uh, let me take uh, 62,000 kg having purchased at uh, let me take uh, is purchased at 120,000 dollars okay so now First of all, I'm calculating the direct material price variance. And for that, I need the standard price, which is $2. I need the uh, actual price, which is something I have to calculate. So actual price per kg is. So $120,000 is the total cost and total quantity produces 62,000. So 120 divided by 62,000. So I'm getting divided by 62,000 so I'm getting 1.94 this is something I'm getting when I'm round grinding off so now let's calculate the direct material price variance everyone please do the calculation so standard price is 2 actual price is 1.94 and actual quantity purchase is 62,000 kg so guys if you can see standard price is more than the actual price standard price is 2 and actual price is 1.94 so i'm getting when i multiply the difference i will be getting uh, four thousand dollars favorable here i'm getting the favorable number because actual price is less why i'm writing favorable because actual price is less actual cost is less and the standard cost is more so it means we are having a favorable outcome next is direct material quantity variance so difference in the quantities standard quantity is how much one unit unit is produced at 3 kg so standard quantity is how much so total units we are making is 20,000 each unit requires 3 kg so total kg requires is 60,000 so standard quantity required is 60,000 kg and actual quantity we are using is 62,000 kg multiplied by standard price the standard price is 2 so ultimately uh, here standard quantity is less and actual quantity is more so it means there is an unfavorable variance or there is an adverse effect because we are using more quantities than it is then we have to use so 2000 minus uh, multiply by 2 so 4000 adverse we are getting so if we just evaluate our answer direct material price variance is favorable and direct material quantity variance is unfavorable or adverse it will have have an adverse effect on our books on our books means on our profits so with the price variance our profit will be increasing because it will have a favorable effect according to the price we are saving our uh, money According to the quantity, we are losing our money. We are incurring the extra cost. We are incurring the extra money. So this is about the direct material price variance and the quantity variance. Now, we are discussing about the next thing, direct, uh, direct labor variances. So direct labor variances will also work in the same way. So direct labor rate variance. So 
just like we have a direct material rate variance price variance in the same way we have a direct labor rate variance so in place of price for material we are using the price so because raw material is purchased at a price but for labor i will be talking about rate labors will be paid at the rate per hour so the formula is exactly same standard price minus actual price but now it is a standard rate minus actual rate and in place place of quantity we will be having the hours multiply by actual hours worked so in place of quantity we have hours in place of price we have the rate exactly in the same way now the next is in place of quantity variance we have a uh, we are talking about the number of hours not of the quantity so there will be efficiency variance if they are taking lesser hours so it means efficiency is increasing if they are taking more hours it means efficiency is degrading so standard hours minus actual hours into standard rate so this is something we are going to use so direct labor variance is including the direct labor rate variance and direct labor efficiency variance in the rate variance we are taking the variances between the rates in take of in case of efficiency variance we are taking the difference in the number of hours so this is about the direct labor variances so guys it will work in the same way just like uh direct material variances work these are the two major part of the cost which we have discussed in this session okay guys so this is all about this session thank you so much everyone thank you for watching the session hope uh, you get the concept whatever we have discussed in this session thank you so much bye bye guys all the best found this session valuable hit the like button subscribe to our channel and tell us in the comments below what topic we should dive into next